<laughs> Welcome to Planet Verloc. You're listening to our new show, Psionics Digirati. Well, it's not really that new. I think we've been doing this um, off and on for a couple of years, and I don't podcast as much as I really should. But then again, I'm ten times as busy as I had been. I'm ten times busier now than I was uh, five years ago, <laughs> to say the least. So what does Air Doctor do with all his time? Oh, yeah, if only I had that much time. What do I do? Probably more than I should. <laughs> no, really, I remember, oh gosh, 30, well, um, 30 years ago, my mentor had said to me, Oh, believe it or not, there will come a time, Thomas, <laughs> there will come a time when people will ask you to do them favors. And at that time, I was very young, full of energy, and not too wise. I, I thought, oh, you have to be kidding me. Nobody's ever going to ask me for help. <laughs> what do you mean? Of course, you know, that was back in the old days of dial-up modem, so we didn't really spend all that much time on the Internet. And if we did, we were running uh, inquiries on search engines, you know, dinosaur search engines like InfoSeek, and discovering old, um, well, what would be old now. I mean, I don't even think some of these websites are even around anymore. We used to have these things called news groups. I'm, I remember um, Charles Cosimano's wife, my former mentor, uh, his wife Donna used to uh, administrate and um, run the news group called... Um, the daggers and that that was like there's you know there the chicago slosh and um i think they were doing some naughty things back then but they were also you know posting about some interesting psychic stuff here and there anywho uh yeah back in those days we were um doing uh not very much for the internet I started dabbling here and there, but not much. So I didn't even imagine that it would be possible one day people would be asking me for help. Not only people. Actually, it started with uh, intelligences or spirits. Um, and they didn't really ask. They just kind of lifted me out of body, showed me where I was going to go, and then it manifested. You know, you've read my book, um, The Miraculous Prayer Board Guide, VPG 2. You've possibly read my book, The Metaphysics of Self-Mastery, VPG 1. And in these books, I tell the story of when I'm very young. I was about uh, six years old, turning seven, and... I didn't know it yet, but I would be spending my seventh birthday overseas. So I was leaving California and heading over to Riyadh, Saudi Arabia to meet up with my stepfather. And we were going to live there uh, for a couple years. And I had some interesting encounters there, brought some stuff back with me to the U United States. and. Um, you know, we visited different countries, uh, Germany, England, Greece, uh, Japan, and so on. And I ended up later as an adult having an opportunity to move to Japan um, a couple of times, actually, uh, to move to Japan and teach English and also write online uh, content for various companies, I should say. So, 
um, in these books I talk about uh, coming into the magical thinking and what happened uh, both the, in the paranormal and supernatural realms for me and then of course um, later my predictions about things that would happen you know we're seeing it manifest now there's more black holes in the universe popping up getting uh, too close for comfort in some cases uh, not too many yet but there you know we're seeing more of them the Sun has this gaping uh, hole in it or um, it's like this black scar on the Sun right and it is about 60 times the width of the earth at this time of speaking podcasting or whatever it is that I'm doing flapping my lips on a microphone while you are so humbly listening and thank you so what does air doctor do it is time now like I said more than I probably should I'm usually busy helping people and that's not an invitation for people to come asking me for help it's simply that I've known people or got to know people over many years and I've been busy around the clock running uh, favors to help them and of course experiment here and there um, on my own uh, in my own endeavors which I'd like to do a lot more of the latter part experimenting in my own endeavors there can not, never be enough uh, time for all the experiments I want to do and as my former mentor once told me this wonderful advice these words of wisdom which I usher you to absorb and apply now is my mentor said Thomas calm down <laughs> and that tends to be you know that's true for a lot of um, creative minds uh, beginner students intermediate students have ideas and these students want to test these ideas and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that it's just that we don't want to run off into the world of fantasy so fast that we forget or neglect to uh, develop our focus concentration and uh, develop awareness, uh, psionic awareness. So it's always important to go back and practice the initial exercises that every beginner and including every master should practice if not on a daily basis a weekly basis and i detail these in my club as well verlock.club join us become a psionic lensman join the psionic brotherhood work on some global projects and strike up a conversation with me i do so love my club members very 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 much all right, so what I do with my time, as I've told you, is I'm busy a lot of times helping people. What are my goals? One of my goals is to establish with my following a new philosophy or a new way of thinking, a new way of reasoning, which is an interesting topic to bring up. Um, I believe my former mentor often referred to psionics entering um, what is called the age of force versus the age of reasoning we've left the age of reasoning enter the age of force the era of chaos oh i hate to disagree i mean i agree with the the whole um age of force and age of chaos being very or era of chaos being very possible um, depending on our interpretation of what's going on in the world but I tend not to see psionics as a property of the age of uh, force uh, ergo psionics can and is definitely used 
to bring things to a conclusion and that is indeed uh, forceful. But I tend to think of psionics more as the opposite, that it is belonging to the age of reason. And the reason <laughs> is because psionics is based off of um, the concept that everything in existence is made or possesses information. Information makes it all work. So, psionics is uh, influencing and uh, messing around with the information on the mental level. So, psionics essentially belongs to the mental level, um, albeit uh, we do include emotional energies uh, for psionic magic. But psionics itself really belongs to the realm of mind. And beyond this, we have, you know, the realm or the um, essence of Vril, which makes everything else work, including mind. Mind can't move without Vril. But I digress. I do not want to confuse you. We work in the realm of mind, empowering the mind, period. So this is all mind stuff, right? Got it? Good. So what is my philosophy that I'm talking about? What is my goal? My goal at this time is to understand two forces that are perpetually warring upon one another. Like a, an endless rut uh, a routine game of tug-of-war with no end in sight. Either party neither party, I should say, is going to die, and neither party is really going to ever win. You have the retrospect um, saying, let's take us back to the 1950s, throw women back in the kitchen. It, you know, this is an extreme view. I'm talking about the extreme differences here. And then you have all the way on the other end of the spectrum saying, you know, you know let's not uh, I don't know, let's not use pronouns or uh, let's use proper pronouns and, um, you know, saying that the other side is, you know, wants to go back to 1950 and uh, so on and so forth. And then you have the progressives and so on. And these are extreme opposites, of course. Um, the good occultist or arcanist uh, seeks the middle path, kind of like what... Uh, Gautama Buddha said is the middle path is the exit essentially from this hell <laughs> that everybody's in is that middle path or as the um, various magicians uh, say uh, the left hand path is the exit from the right hand path and the right hand path is the continuous cycle of rebirth uh, you have children and you're reborn through your children. Left hand path is to learn how to create your own light. You know, the various followers of um, teachings of various gods, you know, or angels and so on and so forth. But I'm not going to get into that. It's not really my interest. Um, I just see it all as energy, various patterns of energy, various um, densities or lack thereof, um, various frequencies and channels. And so the gods themselves are no less energy beings than we are ourselves as matter is and the material world is itself constructed of energy and information and psionics works within the realm of information so veneration is really a foreign concept although I have had my spiritual experiences with um, various things like the Sun and forces in nature but I view these as um, 
energy beings on a different level than myself. And so while there is a mutual respect, I don't necessarily venerate any of these things, including the gods. That may be a very unpopular statement, <laughs> but it's all right. I'm allowed to think what I want to think. And if I'm not allowed to think what I want to think, I'm going to think it anyway. Because I am will. And that I am. And I am willing to tell you my goal now. About time, Herr Doctor. I've been going off on a tangent here. Um, I was going to talk about my goal is to, between the two parties in these different ways of shouting at one another, I decided years ago on my podcast to tell my following, we will follow what the global operatives are doing. We will follow the technocracy in parallel and bend reality enough in our favor. Therefore, we now have wonderful AIs which are serving us. And every technology that is produced becomes a carrier and amplifier, a new glorious addition to Air Doctor's arsenal. <laughs> And yours. Of course I'm sharing this with you. Otherwise I wouldn't be here talking about it, would I? All you need to understand is focused concentration, my invaluable psionics philosophy, and practice some remote influence. And dowsing. You really should do some dowsing. And so I'll, I'll tell you, the world can be... Um, as good or as bad as you want it to be. And that's why we do this. We follow in parallel what the masters of the world are doing and bend things into our favor. Right? I mean, because otherwise, if, uh, if you uh, try to push and pull, you're, you're just adding another rope to the, you know, to the two parties fighting and it's crisscrossing these ropes, and next thing you know, there's so many um, strands of thread pulling in different directions, it looks like God's playing cat's cradle. You know, we're not really getting it anywhere. So, you know, see the world as a bunch of blinking lights going on and off, and get it to do things that you want. That's it. That's really it. All right, I'm going to leave you all with um, a dowsing tip tonight, my special gift to you, which I usually reserve for club members. But I'll make this brief uh, so that my club members who pay for this wondrous wisdom won't be too upset at me for sharing this with you all. One of the interesting things about dowsing is that we have to learn how to have a different sort of conversation with ourselves and our tools. Uh, too often than not, a person will pull out their pendulum and charts, perhaps. Perhaps they don't pull out the charts. A lot of times um, people just pull out their pendulum and they want a quick answer. Is someone, you know, for example, is someone uh, influencing me to be so angry and self-destructive? And the pendulum starts to swing, and before the pendulum can swing in a direction that you're sure is yes or no, you're already thinking a follow-up question, such as, or am I doing this to myself? Or do I have some kind of uh, mental problem? Or is this uh, subconscious? And, you know, you're going to get the pendulum swinging everywhere. Because you're talking to the pendulum the same way that you think to yourself, and you can't do that. This is why when you really want to know something, you think about it. You write it down. Maybe you 
rewrite it, rephrase it until you've written your question in such a way that you're sure this is a question that you wish to ask. And you can be rather sure of the way in which it will be answered. So you write down your question, whatever it is. Put it to the side. Don't use your pendulum just yet. Just put it to the side. Put a paperweight on that. And go eat your lunch. Work out at the gym, whatever it is. Come back and bring that piece of paper out and put it on the yes-no chart or the alpha chart or whatever chart that you have. Um, my alignment chart, cult, uh, cultish chart, uh, What's that one chart called? The um, well, I'd have to pull that out, but it's the um, motives chart, motives chart, and so on. Or um, I have a brain chart, all kinds of charts in the Necromancer Elite Thousand Kit. You should really get one, by the way, slash shop So place that piece of paper with a question on it on one of those charts, or place your piece of paper near the chart, clear your mind, take a few deep breaths. Take your time, breathe in and out, the vital breath of the universe, and let it all go. And then approach the question without really caring what the answer is. Just out of idle curiosity, cultivate this attitude of being dispassionate. Hold your pendulum over your chart your chosen chart to answer the question because as I've said you have a general idea of how your question might be answered a simple a simple yes or no answer or uh, um, an alphanumeric answer a motive answer cultish logic emotional and so on and so forth a particular area of the brain or what have you perhaps um, the degree of intensity my hot and cold charts in the necromancer elite dozen kit hold your pendulum over your chart look at the paper will the answer to manifest your pendulum will swing and give you an answer and it's going to give you an answer based off the information you've presented which is a statement or a question. As I've said, psionics is the art of influencing or interpreting information, messing around with information. I think I said that actually. And so this is how you ask the question. You don't you don't have like the typical conversation with yourself and your pendulum because you're gonna get all kinds of answers all over the off the charts, you know. You want to do this using the information method as I've just so eloquently or maybe not so eloquently described to you. And that's it. Nice big old 24-minute podcast for you to digest. And you didn't have to pay anything to kick back and listen to your good old how your favorite must man, Air Doctor von Verloc, master of the phantom frequency in the sand guards. All right, lords and ladies, I do hope you become a club member if you're not already. Join me at verloc.club or have a look at the blogs at verloc.com slash blog. Check out our shop and keep the magic high. Air Doctor commands.